Hi, and thanks for taking a few minutes and tuning in for today's Connect video, Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, and uh, hope you're having a, a great week. Hey, a uh, couple, there's a lot of, this This video, video will be a little bit different. There's a lot of information I'm just going to share with some announcements and some Ukraine information. Uh, and then we'll ha I'll have a short, very short, and I know famous last words, um, thought in regard to the end times as we are currently walking through First Thessalonians, covered the end of chapter 4 this past Sunday, and we'll be covering the next two Sundays in chapter 5. Um, so let me just get with a bunch, there's a lot of things happening. This is the busiest time of the year, typically, in the church, running up into the Easter season. Uh, so there is a lot going on. So let me go through a number of things. Next Gen Kids Ice Cream Party, awesome time, this Friday, uh, 5.30 to 7 p.m. And this is going to be up in the grassy area and the uh, upper patio there by the sanctuary. Uh Please email Kim Burko if you are planning to attend, if you have not done so already. That will just help her with ordering things and just some basic organization. But uh, that's this coming Friday, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Believer's Baptism coming up March 27th. You need to contact the church office ASAP as soon as possible if you're interested in this so we can have you meet with myself or one of the other pastors, Pastor Joseph or Pastor Scott. Um, believer's baptism is the New Testament baptism that we see throughout the Gospels and throughout the book of Acts is people get baptized after they put their faith in Jesus Christ. That's the New Testament model for baptism. And so if you have never been baptized after coming to faith in Jesus Christ, this is for you. This is something we would love the honor of uh, having you do this here. And being a part of that. So contact the office as soon as possible. And uh, we can walk through the details for that. Uh, women's Bible study. And also a fellowship group starting up very soon. So contact the church office if you have interest in these things. These meet on Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings. Uh, so just contact the office if you're interested. There's a fellowship group that's starting up. A great way to get connected and meet some other ladies if uh, you're wanting to do that. And also a new, new study starting up here soon. Welcome class coming up. This is for those who are new to the church and want to get a little more information. Now sometimes some people attend this class, they've been here for a number of years, and that's fine if you've never come to this class. It's a great way to just make sure you understand how we are structured, the history here, core values, mission, vision, ministry, and all kinds of things, okay? Um, that happens Wednesday, March 30th. It's in the evening, 6.30 to 8 p.m., Please RSVP with the church office so we can make sure we have enough materials for everybody. Uh, youth Yard Sale coming up. This is the annual fundraising event for them. This is the largest fundraising event for our youth ministry, our next-gen students, junior high and high school kids. And, and the money they earn from this uh, helps fund the costs for their summer mission trips coming up. Okay, So that's what this money is used for. The yard sale itself is on April 2nd. Drop-off week is March 28th through April 1st. Uh, so if you have some gently used items to donate for the youth to sell then and, and use those profits for their mission trips, that's March 28th through April 1st when you drop that off. Now, a lot of stuff comes in, all right, and it gathers down here in Chapel Hall. Pastor Scott really needs some help for some people who can come by on that Thursday and Friday and begin to sort and price and organize all the things that come in. So that is a huge part of this. So if you're able to help, that would be massively helpful for all of the youth ministry, and especially for Pastor Scott. Um, okay, a couple more things. This year, sorry, this is so long, but lots of stuff. This year's Bible Bee Summer Study is now open to register. If you remember, if you're like, what's the Bible be? Remember back in January, I interviewed Jordan Tabor, one of our own students here, and uh, she went to the Nationals uh, with the National Bible Bee and um, placed in the top 20, I believe. I think it was, was it 16th, I think. Uh, sorry, Jordan, if that's wrong. Um, but a great way 
to deepen your own roots in Christ and studying of His Word. There's a summer study, if you remember, she talked about that, and it's, it's something everyone can do. And you can do it at your own pace or at the pace they suggest. Um, but the link for this is bibleborg slash summer dash study. So um, it's right there on your screen. If you're interested, follow that link and uh, you can um, be a part of that and kind of this summer dig deeper and deepen your roots into God's Word. Now a couple of notes on the Ukraine. I mentioned Sunday morning that I would share these links, so here they are. So two ways that you can help. This is from, this. Is, I've got this information, these links from our association, uh, Venture Church Network. And uh, so these are some links that are linked to or associated with some of the mission agencies that we've been partnered with for many decades, okay? So these are trusted things here. Uh, the first link here is how you can help um, give to the Ukrainian refugee efforts, okay? Um, this money would go towards the, uh, the refugee crisis in Poland, where many of those refugees have gone. Uh, so you can see the link there on your screen. Um, if you're try it's a long link, so I apologize, but uh, you may have to pause the video and then try and copy the link on that. Uh, so that's one way you can help with some of the refugee crisis that's a result of the war currently. Uh, the second link here is a link to a particular missionary in the eastern part of Ukraine. This is a missionary with Mission Door as the mission agency. Once again, we've worked with this agency for decades, not only personally as a church, but uh, with our entire association for decades. Okay, um, So if you want to help a particular missionary that's doing good work in eastern Ukraine, uh, which is where most of the war is, um, then you can donate directly uh, there with that link. All right, that's all, all the stuff. Some important things I wanted to take some time to walk through with you on those things. So today I just want to focus on one aspect here of walking through this past Sunday and these next two Sundays as we walk through things about the the return of Christ, the rapture of Christ, the second coming of Christ, all these kinds of things. Just, just, I guess this is a pastoral note for you. That no, we, we, we need to realize and approach this topic with a degree of humility because there are many different views out there within Christendom in regard to these different events that we're studying right now the details of those events, exactly what will happen, when these things will happen, what has to happen before uh, certain things happen, and all these kinds of, of things. Now, we have to understand and have a sense of humility here. Number one, know that these are not essential, essential doctrinal issues. There are other doctrinal issues that are rise to a higher level of importance, the deity of Christ, the authority of Scripture, and so on, okay? Um, the atoning death of Christ, sacrificial death of Christ, the resurrection. Um, th those are essential doctrinal beliefs. These things we're studying, the return of Christ, the second coming of Christ, the rapture of Christ, these things are, I would refer to these as secondary issues, right? Which simply means this. Other Christians will have different views, and that's okay. Uh, we can have discussion and debate and go back and forth a little bit on this, but no, they can have a different view and still be a Christian brother or sister. Uh, we can still have great fellowship with them and not worry that someone's faith is shaken here or, or not solid in some way. These are just different views. Now, now, you might ask, well, how can we have different views? I mean, don't we all look at the same Bible? Yes. We, uh, we all have the same high view of Scripture. But the, the challenge comes in with how to interpret certain passages. Um, and, and these are all prophetic passages. And there's certain rules we follow in biblical interpretation, but there's still some wiggle room in some of these things, I guess you could say. And so it's not that people who have different views don't have a high view of Scripture like we would. It's they have a different interpretation of certain passages. And that's where we have to have some humility here and understand, okay, that's that's... 
they're they're sincerely seeking to know what the Bible says, and they end up in a different place because they they interpret it a little bit differently. And just know that's kind of the nature of prophetic material sometimes, because you're looking forward, trying to see what is it telling us will happen in the future. Um, and um, I think it's important to understand that most of this prophecy in regard to the person of Christ, most of the prophecy in Scripture as a whole, has turned out to be a literal reality. In other words, what it said is pretty much a literal uh, prophecy of what actually happened. It wasn't just so symbolic that it turned out to be something completely different than it said. So we take a fairly literal approach to uh, these things. Now, as a church, you have to understand, we are um, what we would refer to as pre-trib and pre-mill. Now, what Many of you don't have a clue what I just said, and that's okay. Um, so when, when, when it comes to the things of, of uh, future things here, eschatology is the area of theology. We are what's called pre-tribulation, meaning we believe the rapture of the church happens before the tribulation period. In other words, pre-trib. We're pre-trib when it comes to the rapture. Other Christians are mid-trib, some are post-trib meaning they think the rapture happens in the middle of the tribulation or at the end of the tribulation. We're pre-trib, okay? I can have great fellowship with someone who's mid-trib or post-trib, all right? That, that's fine. Uh, we can have discussions if we want to and get into that debate and go back and forth, but they're a believer in Christ, okay? We're also what's referred to as pre-millennial or pre-mill. Millennial kingdom. The millennial kingdom is something that we believe will happen yet in the future the thousand-year reign of Christ on earth. That's millennium, millennial, kingdom, okay? We're pre-mill, meaning we believe the second coming of Christ happens before the millennial kingdom, all right? There are some Christians who are amillennial, meaning they don't think there's a future millennial kingdom. They believe it's already happened or we're in it right now. I would strongly disagree with that, but that's okay. They're still Christians. They're still fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so I share this with you just so you understand our approach to this when we preach is pre-trib and pre-mill. We believe the rapture of the church happens before the tribulation and that the second coming of Christ, remember I, I talked how those are two distinct events this past Sunday, the second coming of Christ will happen prior to to the millennial, pre-mill, pre-millennial return of Christ, coming of Christ, okay? Anyhow, there's so much, it's such a wide and vast topic here to cover when you talk about eschatology or the future things. And uh, But I just want to make sure you understand where we as a church are oriented here in the scope of this. We are pre-trib and pre-mill in our belief. Pre, we believe the rapture happens pre-tribulation, and that the second coming of Christ will happen right before the millennial kingdom, pre-mill, okay? And um, just know that even those that have different views on this would end up at the same place at the very end, saying, yeah, at the end, we have an eternal state with God reigning over all things in the presence of Christ, the new heaven and new earth. All evil has been judged. Unbelievers are judged, and all believers are entered in, in, into eternity with Christ in heaven and with one another in heaven. And so we all end up at the same place, I guess you could say. It's just how do we get there through the interpretation of these passages, and we can differ on that, and that's okay. I don't want to want you to draw hard lines between other Christian friends you might have that might have a different view than what you're hearing on a Sunday morning or in a video or something like that. Just understand there's some legitimate views out there, all within the realm or under the umbrella of Christendom or Christian doctrine. And there's just a few differences in this area because it is prophetic material and sometimes difficult to interpret with great unanimity on these things. Anyhow, would you allow me to just pray for us? Father, there's a lot going on, not only in our church, but in the world. So we do lift up a special prayer for those in Ukraine, especially for our brothers and sisters in Christ there who are dealing with tremendous adversity and suffering and death and pain. And Lord, they would continue to not only represent you well and shine the light of truth and love and grace, but, Lord, that you would protect them in doing so. And help us to approach these topics with great humility, but great joy and confidence and hope. 
uh, that, uh, Lord, um, we can rejoice and celebrate in the, in the big picture that you will reign supreme and we will be with you in all, for all eternity. Um, and let us not have division and, and uh, conflict with other Christians who have maybe some different views in this area. Help us all, Lord, remain unified in this and celebrate uh, you as the victor over death and over sin. In your name we pray. Amen. Anyhow, lots going on. Hope you're involved with a lot of this stuff and be in prayer for the people of Ukraine. And uh, hey, we'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.